Sadie Jamalanda, Christine L here, and this is floss tube number 47. It is the 4th of May, 2022. I'm a little late in this one, which is not entirely unusual. I try to aim for every two weeks, but it is what it is. So I hope you're all doing well. This is my little spot on the internet where I talk all things crafty. My floss tube is generally um reserved for cross stitch diamond painting and um crochet so this week i only have cross stitch but i have a lot of cross stitch i think i went kind of like a little bonkers on the cross stitching i've been i think practicing some heavy avoidance <laughs> um so i kind of threw myself into the cross stitch i'm trying to make a not a few changes, but like institute a few new habits into my life and it's kind of like good and bad. It's kind of playing on my emotions a lot. Um, last week I, I talked a lot about mental health and one of the things I wanted to talk about this week was about masking. Um, it's kind of like in relation to choosing whether or not to talk about your mental health and what masking means, but I kind of don't feel like it today, so I hope you'll forgive me that, you'll permit me that. Um, I mean, if you have any questions or are curious, just comment, reach out. Uh, in fact, so many of you commented with such like helpful things um, or you reached out to me privately, personally, so I am ridiculously appreciative of all of you for sharing your thoughts, sharing your experiences. Um, both in terms of just general mental health and what, um, you know, t talking about it versus not talking about it and what stage you're at. So just in general, a big, big thank you to everyone who shared their thoughts and helped make me feel better and also um, shared different perspectives, which I really appreciate. So yeah, so this week I'm just going to kind of like sweep that under and just sort of move on with myself. Um, uh, let's talk TV shows and, and whatnot. Let's just go straight into like fun, relaxing, um, distracting stuff. I have been watching Doctor Who. So uh, let me start off by saying I have never, I mean, I'm very familiar with Doctor Who, especially at the height of its, its fame and whatnot. Like so many people I know watch Doctor Who or are familiar with it. I was familiar with, you know, the concept of the doctors and the companion and the changing of the actors and all of that stuff. And, you know, was nine better than 10 or was 11 better than whatever. Um, so I've heard about it for so, so long and it was just never a show that I had any interest in getting into. So I did not watch the classic uh, Doctor Who. I haven't watched the old ones. I basically, for me, season one was the reboot in 2005. So I started, of course, with um, Christopher Eccleston and Billy Piper as Rose. So I, I I don't dislike it, but I'm not like passionately, madly, like I would not consider myself a Whovian or whatever it is they call the fans. I don't know. I, I think it's because I've spent so many years with so many people talking about how wonderful the show is, how awesome and yada, yada, yada. And I'm watching it and I'm like, Okay, it's entertaining. So let's be real. I've gotten to season five, which I believe is the first season with Matt Smith as the doctor. I'm not really, I don't gel with him. There's something about, I think, I feel like he's a little too much, which is weird having just come from David Tennant as the doctor, but he just strikes me as a little too much. And I've heard so many negative things about Christopher Eccleston's doctor. I actually kind of really liked him. Um, it was a little more sober, but you could still see the humor there. I've heard him described as a bit cold, but I actually found him to be like fairly emotional. Um, I mean, his love language for sure is hand holding and hugging. That man will grab anybody's hand and just run and take off or um, you know, just as a, as a form of comfort for him, it's like just, the, I don't know why that struck me so much as the hand holding. Um, but there are a lot of things to really like about the show. Like, you know, um, it's, it's fun. It's campy. I watched a lot of like monster of the week type shows or, um, bad guy of the week type shows. 
So it falls really well in line with all of that. I just, again, I think when people talk something up so much, you expect so much. And I'm like, no, no, this is just a regular TV show. What, what was I expecting? I don't know. But like I said, it's it's interesting enough that I've kept watching for the five seasons and I'm I'm interested. So far, Matt Smith is the one I connect with the least. Um... I, I couldn't tell you why, really, but, uh, so yeah, so let's, I'm putting that out there that I'm finally watching Doctor Who, I'm finally trying to see what the fuss is about, um, you know, entertaining it, I'm, I'm watching, I'm watching. So with all that being said, like I said, I just wanted to get straight to the stitching. I have so many finishes this week, I don't know, and they're all, like, stuff I haven't shown y'all before on Flosstube. So they were like start and finish within the same span, like between now and the last video. Um, I don't know what come over me. I've had a lot of guilt about how much time I've been spending cross stitching, which is not cool. Um, but it is what it is. I'm trying to just kind of like pull back or slow down or do other things, uh, which I've kind of been neglecting, but that happens sometimes. Let's get to the finishes. The first finish for this week is one that I had promised in my last at floss tube that I was like, this is definitely going to be a finish for next video. And it absolutely is. So this is a Legendary Girls by, is it Lakeside? Little House Needleworks. So if I, I figure if a girl wants to be a legend, she should just go ahead and be one. This turned out, in my opinion, absolutely perfect. I am so, so thrilled um, with this, how this finished up. So one of the reasons I'm so, so thrilled is because I did come up with, well, come up with, uh, I, I picked the colors from Stash and created my own color palette. So we've got um, two Sulkies, 1035 and 1292 for the red and the blue. Um, and then Oh, and Sulky. Did I use black in this? Or I did not. I don't know why the black is in here. Um, and then I have two limited edition Gentle Arts and one Forbidden Fiber Co. in Pan Am. So this was um, the color palette I used and just kind of approximated based on the picture and based on what like the DMC color kind of looked like in the chart. Um, I was a little worried about maybe this this color uh, not playing in well with the others, or rather this light blue not really... Honestly, as far as I'm concerned, it's perfect, and I absolutely love it. So that one was started on the 9th of April and finished on the 13th of April, so I literally finished it like just, just after the floss tube. I kind of like hyper-focused on that one. Um, it took me 28 hours and was over 3,400 stitches, so not bad at all. I actually even already have, um, I have a frame for this that I can use because I definitely want to put that one up. I'm very happy with it, so hopefully that'll get done at some point. My next finish was a, it's a small pattern that was released by a Wild Violet Cross Stitch. Um, I, as soon as it came on my screen, I fell in love. I, I don't, I mean, I don't know why, but this is Fox and Crow by Vi Wild Violet Cross Stitch. There was something about this image that I just absolutely adored. I love the framing of it, not being square, that it's, um, you know, arched. I always love something with the moon in it. Um, and this is another one where I picked everything from Stash. So rather than, I mean, it's only three colors. So I ended up going with, um, from Mystical Diamond Art, Dread Pirate Robert. Um, from Gentle Arts, Wheatfield. So that played, I just found that one really popped as the gold color. Oops, I lost the piece there. And then Wrought Iron from the Gentle Art as well, which I had as my dark color. Um, the only changes I made were to add some beads. So I added some orange garnets both to the center of the flowers and to the center of the crown. I think the bead might be just a bit big for the center of that crown, but I still really, really like it because sparkle, sparkle. And then these are silver, I believe they're hematites. I have it written. Do I have it written? 
Yep, silver hematite. I was right. So in the center of these stars are silver hematites. So I definitely want to find a way to either frame or finish this up because I it's one of those that when I was finished, I just kind of kept staring at it because I just really, really like the design, the feel. It's a lot of negative space, which I really like. Um, I like to have some some air and some breathing room. So I'm super thrilled with this. And I think I think Wild Violet Cross Stitch, when they repost my Instagram, they were like, first finish. So I literally, the pattern was released. I picked it up. I started it and I, I had to finish soon enough. Uh, so um, the fabric for this is a 32 count linen. It's also, it's um, rather, it's Winter Sparrow from Forbidden Fiber Co. This is actually a scrap I had left from a bigger piece. So I, I hold on to everything. And this is a good, decent size as well. Um, I started on the 19th of April, finished on the 20th of April. It was a total of seven hours and 900, just over 900 stitches. So definitely a good weekend stitch, very simple, not too much counting because depending on where you start, there's still, I mean, aside from the stars hanging out in the middle of nowhere, um, there's something to anchor you all the way around. So it's really, really good. I really, really like this one. There's some pieces that just like talk to you or just call out to you and for me this was definitely one of them. My next finish, I told you there was a few, there's there's more. Um, my next finish continued the Innocent Bones Tarot Sal. So this is the Hermit. Uh, this is my third one, fourth one, January, February, March, April. This is the fourth one in the series. I basically am doing kind of like my own stitch along where once a month uh, I am stitching one of the tarot cards uh, um, from Innocent Bones. So I think in all the past ones, I kept saying 14 count Ada. And so the first three that I had were from a kit. So the rest I had to go, I like purchase myself. Um, didn't realize until I bought the 14 count fabric and put it up next to the other, another finished piece and went, yeah, that's not 14 count, you big dodo. So for whatever reason, it's 18 count. Don't know why. I mean, it's quite obviously really small stitches, so I don't know why I thought it was 14. But it's 18 count. It's just a white, plain Ada. Um, and then I was able to use all of the colors from the previous three kits, with the exception, I think, of two new colors. I think... Um, this dusty rose here is a little bit different than the one used in a previous kit and I think this color was new as well. I'm not 100% sure but I mean the layout is the same and it's still got the same feeling and because they're still matching colors in this from the other ones they're all going to go like really quite seamlessly together into the book so yay! So that one was started on the 20th of April, 2022, finished on the 23rd. It was a total of 21 hours and just under 3,000 stitches. My next finish is, um, oh, it's still in the hoop, I didn't even realize, is a freebie chart that Michelle Bendy Stitchy Designs released basically for her like Patreon, Patreon, her Twitch and Discord users. So it was kind of like, just a little gift for them. And it is called Stripey or I like them Stripey. So this originates from a conversation um, that she, well, something that she mentioned on one of her floss tubes, as well as a conversation with uh, Jasmine, who I believe is knitting nurse Jasmine. Um, and the idea is that variegated stitching or variegated yarn, which you can see in this peachy pink here, or pink and yellow, that's one strand or, or one floss that's variegated, has different colors in it. So is the brown, as you can see, it goes from sort of darker to lighter colors. Um, this stems from basically people saying that there's supposed to be a specific way to use variegated yarn so that it doesn't create stripes like this. Um, but Michelle's POV and mine as well is that you should get to use a variegated however you like. So she was saying that she doesn't mind that it's stripey and I don't either. You'll see that often in my work. Um, 
So the only thing I tried to do really here was to just sort of keep it looking like individual petals. So the only thing I played with was whether what color I started with in each petal so that they didn't touch and meet. That's the only thing, but otherwise you can see I worked the petals back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, rather than apparently there's ways where you can go like in a circular motion or you can um, do it in different ways so that the change in colors doesn't create striping. I don't mind it and I think people should, I mean it's it's the least taxing for my brain to just stitch row by row. So another way that you could have done the flower of course is stitch all the way across and created stripes within the whole flower. I wanted to do it individually per petal and I just really like the way that came out. So that's that's fun and it's quick and it was easy so um, I started and finished on the 24th of April it was only four and a half hours to stitch and just over 600 stitches so something quick and easy and it allowed me to use two colors of floss that I had for my stash um, I used from a flower silk from stitchy box this is burnt caramel and this is tequila sunrise from live and die LA so this was the color that I picked out initially. I was like, I absolutely positively want my flowers to be this color. But then I had a hell of a time trying to find a coordinating, coordinating color that I wanted to use that worked with this. Because this is pretty, it's bright. It's not quite neon, but it's bright. So when I paired it with this sort of like brownish color, I wasn't sure it would work. I thought maybe the brown, the orange in the brown would actually offset but it didn't show up too, too orange in the piece. So I actually am now kind of really in love with that color combination. Um, I may find another reason to use these two together. I really, really like them. So the last finish I have to show you for this week is also my 22nd finish for um, 2022. So this was something that I'd had in my stash. I'd purchased from my local um, needle workshop and it just kind of sat there for a bit and then I pulled it out and decided to work on it. This is Patchwork de la Brodeuse from Jardin Privé. It is a chart designed by Nathalie Sichon and it is so cute. Okay, so it'll seem like nothing to you, but broadcast was totally interrupted for me. Um, I had a phone call from uh, a contractor, handyman. Um, I'm going to, it being spring, going to restart the work I was doing on the house. Um, hopefully get the front deck done this time, so we'll see. So where was I? Yes, um, I'm all discombobulated thinking about something else now. Um, Patchwork de la Bradeuse. So yeah, this is one that I had in my stash and then I picked up and like, I just really wanted to do it. I really liked the idea of the little bits and pieces. It wasn't like a lot of fill. It was a lot of confetti. I did a lot of color switching throughout, um, but it was so, so much fun. I will also show a picture here of what it looked like before the back stitching. So you can see it makes a huge difference because there are some elements um, like this was not here at all. It was not even part of the image before the back stitching, right? That's all back stitch and the needle and thread and all of those things that really help to make it kind of pop after the fact. But it's such a cute piece and of course all of the elements uh, that we know and love as cross stitchers, as embroiderers, plus great florals and I don't know, I really enjoy doing that back stitching all around the little squares. That was kind of fun. So really, really enjoyed this piece. I would like to be able to frame this. I think it might fit in an 8x8 frame. I'd have to measure and do all that, but hopefully we'll see this as a fully finished piece soon enough. So yeah, that one is a, it's a 36 count mystery linen. I think I got this in someone's D stash, so it either wasn't labeled or I've lost the label. I started on the 23rd of April and finished on the 30th of April for a total of 35 and a half hours and over 4,200 stitches. The next and last finished I have, I can't actually show you yet. 
Um, this is actually a small bird pattern um, for the Great Twitch Burb Migration hosted by Michelle at Bendy Stitchy Designs. So it, it's something that came up during one of her Twitch streams. Um, that we're all going to basically be swapping bird projects. So I've gotten my partner, I made the pattern, and I just kind of have to fully finish it. And I won't be able to show you all any of that until my partner has received it. So I have to ship it out by the 1st of June. It shouldn't be a problem. I just have to get on doing the final finish and deciding what I want to do. It'll probably be just kind of like something flat and hangy, I think. But I will be sure to either record a piece or take pictures and share with you. So this is my 23rd finish. I just can't show you yet. Because I'm expecting someone to stop by soon, I will go through my other works in progress a little faster. Um, so those are all the finishes, works in progress. I decided to work just a little more on the Moonlight Sampler from um, Janine McGowan or the Blue Flower Stitching. I haven't done much. For whatever reason, as you can tell, because I just touched nothing but new projects this week, um, I'm just kind of sort of languishing when it comes to the old projects. But um, previously, we did not have this full lantern here, and we've got the, the archway that's ho holding part of the swing up. So I was able to add a little bit more to that, and this is being stitched on an 18-count floba. Um, I'm not saying I have regrets using this fabric, but the Witchy Stitcher did announce that there's a companion piece to the cryptid mystery stitch along, and I wish I had this fabric to use because now I have none left. And I would like to make that match the new one, which is supernatural. So like, I guess like witches and werewolves and vampires and things like that. Nothing to do with the TV show. <laughs> But um, yeah, so if I hadn't started it on this, I would have been able to do um, the new Supernatural one on there, but we'll see. The last piece that I have, this is a new start for me. Um, I will put a picture here of what it looks like. This is Hex Hotel from uh, Kari and Dee's 20, uh, 20 Stitches. Here's what it'll look like when it's done. And here's where I match. Very little bit. I've just got one like tombstone looking thing over here. That's it. I just, just started it. So um, all the colors are matching. So black for black, white for white, uh, DMC at 12 for DMC at 12. Uh, the only thing I'm changing, I'm using the same purple, is that instead of the green called for, I'm using the glow in the dark green. So it's much, much brighter. If you can tell from my, my mess of yarn here, it's... Um, much brighter than I think the called for green, but I just kind of really like the glow in the dark aspect on a haunted house. I think that would be a lot of fun, so I'm keeping it. Um, the fabric is a 14 count Ada that I dyed myself a while back when I was playing around with some colors just for fun. Um, really like this though, and I wish I had kept the formula or paid attention to what I was doing. Um, but yeah, I think it'll go good. The purple pops just enough uh, to add like the shading to the elements. Um, yeah, I think it's good. So that's my next start. Probably something that I'll be focusing on for the next few days. I completely forgot two other works in progress. Probably because I'm a little stressed about someone coming over and I've got that like expectation thing going on. But um, I, do, I do, I am participating in two stitch alongs. So, so one of them that I mentioned previously was the Pro-Choice Stitch Along from Notorious Needle. Um, I have started that and I am caught up. So this is a mystery stitch along. I can't show you what the rest will look like because I don't know it yet. I'm keeping it a secret. Um, actually, maybe I could do the bottom as well because the bottom is done just to show you. I did fully complete the frame. Um, that was the first part, was the frame around with the fancy um, flourishes uh, and the words, my body. That was a lot of stitching. That was like over 4,000 stitches. And then the second part was the my choice, this stuff on the side here and the reproductive system. Um, that was less. I think that was maybe about 1,500 stitches. And then the third part was this text here. I will not go quietly back to 
1950, which is so appropriate right now with what's going on in the States with Roe versus Wade. This is ridiculous. Um, but that was even less stitching. I think it was maybe 500 plus just all that back stitching. So it was a lot at first, but every week has gotten easier or it's a bit more manageable. So I'm much happier about that. But either way, I'm keeping up. So it, it's possible. It's doable. But uh, I've been enjoying that. It was really fun to see the these 3D lettering come to life as I was stitching it. And the last but not least, for real this time, another month passed. And so we got another release for the under the sea stitch along from the frosted pumpkin stitchery again mystery stitch along so i can't show you what it'll look like when it's done but we can see that this was the first part and the second part here added a scuba diver some fish in i think we, it's a manta ray i want to say but absolute it's so so cute um i didn't have any treasure braid for the goggles are what they called for so i just used dmc at 12 and for my black you can see that sparkle i'm using dmc at 12 for the black everywhere um so it'll be sparkly fish as well though i don't know if that'll show up but the manor is just the cutest so this is a lot of fun and i, I i've enjoyed stitches stitching this a very reasonable number of stitches very easy to keep up with um per month so I won't get to touch this until the end of May, but uh, really been having fun with that one. And I am stitching it on a 32 count linen in denim. I don't know who the manufacturer is or the dyer is. That's it. That's all for this week. It was, I feel like I'm out of breath now because I'm like watching the clock and trying to get this done. So my apologies if it was, if I went from like, yeah, to holy crap, I gotta go really fast. <laughs> Um, but such is a life. I did have a couple things. I stopped into my LNS, so I have a couple things to show you for the haul. The first one is Mouse's Halloween Stitching from Tiny Modernist. Um, I've been kind of like wanting to do something Halloween-y, but I didn't want to start this before I showed it to you, so I ended up starting Hex Hotel, but this will be a nice kind of small one to do in between two larger patterns, and I think it's so cute too. The next one I picked up is from, is also a Jeanette Douglas design. I should say also, I don't know why I'm saying also. This is a Jeanette Douglas design. It's called Matter in Hand. And it's also one of those like stitching embroidery related ones. Um, so I look forward to starting that as well. I think uh, after I'd started the patchwork de la Brothers from the Jardin Privé, I was kind of like really interested in doing something similar so <laughs> that is it i have no plans as usual i kind of just do what i want i start what i want um may is a new month so that means there'll be another tarot um the pro choice is a weekly sell so there will be more parts um stitched in by the time we see this video again um and that's about it so yeah i sped through this one <laughs> i hate it um i hope you're all doing well take care of yourselves i will see you in my next video um thanks for watching remember that a sloppy crafter is a happy crafter uh prochaine